OK, so uh, welcome again, everybody, to the EH8010 FX product presentation, which will be presented by Shimon Hochbaum, Director of Product Line Management in SIGCLU. Um, today, we're going to discuss the following. After the introduction, uh, Shimon will uh, show us some use cases. Next, if he's going to uh, talk about some features and specifications of the new product. And at the end, we will let you all, uh, or during the webinar, please uh, write us your questions and Shimon will answer them at the end. The webinar is recorded. All the, um, the slides, uh, the, the presentation will be sent to you following the webinar a couple of days after. Um, Shimon, please start. Good uh, morning, everybody, or good afternoon, wherever you are, and thank you for joining us to uh, this webinar. Uh, it will be my pleasure to present to you uh, our uh, newly available uh, Etherall 8010FX. Before we start, actually, I'd like to uh, try and understand a little better uh, what's the makeup of our audience uh, today? So I'm going to launch a short uh, webinar, and uh, uh, you no, know, please uh, let us know. Basically, you can choose uh, any of the options here on the screen, and uh, let us know if you are uh, already working with Ciclo, uh, you know, interested or any other option uh, that will give me a little bit uh, of an understanding of uh, whether you know already about our maybe uh, existing product lines or are completely new and tailor a little bit uh, the presentation to the audience. Thank you very much. So I see that most everybody has voted. Um, I'm going to close in five seconds, four, three, Two, one. Okay, so we have uh, the majority uh, of the audience uh, are uh, current uh, Ciclo customers, and the other third are considering. And then there are people who I guess who are uh, just uh, curious to hear what we are doing. And thank you for joining us anyway. I hope that after this presentation, you will be more interested into what we do at Ciclo and especially with Millimeter Wave. So we are here today to talk about uh, our Etherroll 8010FX or EH8010FX and what, what I'd like you to uh, take uh, into account as we are going through this presentation is I'm going to show you that uh, here we have here uh, at Ciclo, the leading uh, 10 gigabit uh, radio in terms of uh, system gain, with 64 dBs uh, from uh, radio to radio, not including the gain of the antennas. You can see here on the chart uh, what we understand is the landscape, and uh, with a one-foot antenna, uh, we have uh, basically a few hundreds of meters that we can go further than uh, the next competitors, and you know almost 500 meters more than a good number of our other competition. So that's uh, significant because it translates into how many uh, locations can be served from a single roof. Basically means a lot more value uh, to any roof that you acquire and are allowed to deploy equipment from. Uh, or it translates into availability of the links at the same distance, uh, which means that you can now offer more competitive uh, uh, service level agreements uh, to your customers, uh, which is also, uh, I'm sure, pretty good value. Uh, the uh, other point of interest about T10FX is that uh, it allows delivering 10, 10 gigabit from the radio to your uh, network room uh, 100 meters away or more uh, on the fiber or on copper. Uh, so you, if you have today an existing run of CAT6A from uh, your network uh, closet, 
uh, to the roof and maybe running a one gig or a two gig radio already and you want to upgrade to 10 gigabit guess what uh, there is no need to uh, basically do another run of fiber now to go 10 gigabit you can utilize your existing cat 6a cable and even some cat 5v will come back to that in a moment but really our intention here is to facilitate any which way uh, is interesting for uh, service providers system integrators the rollout and the migration to 10 gigabit leaks and last but not least, uh, we have a very attractive street price. Uh, the distributors in all the different regions uh, know already about uh, the price of uh, the radio and uh, all the equipment which uh, goes together with it. Uh, there's not much, uh, but everybody's familiar with all the accessories and they should be able to provide you with information related to the configuration, the deployment of these radios very quickly. Uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, uh, feel free to ask, and as Sharon said earlier, I'll do my best to answer as we go. So let's start talking about uh, the use cases for the 8010 fx And first and foremost, it is a fiber replacement. So if you were planning to connect uh, to locations uh, with fiber and uh, that fiber is going to take a long time to uh, to install because of permits or uh, other limitations or it's just a huge expense to go a few kilometers uh, across the city uh, you can basically replace uh, this uh, piece of wire with uh, the 8010 fx uh, and you know it will connect to the switches uh, with fiber or with copper as i said earlier uh, and be very simply transparent, uh, just as uh, the fiber was going to be transparent, our 8010 FX will be transparent as well. And we'll connect to switches or uh, an access device and a switch or two routers. Uh, any device which you were planning to connect with fiber uh, can now be connected at 10 gigabit with our 8010 FX. Uh, it should be as simple as that. Uh, basically, if tomorrow you can. Uh, you know, tomorrow or a few months later, you can ultimately bring that fiber run between the two sites, connect the fiber, take out the radios, and your two devices should not know the difference. And that's really what we want to do. We want to be transparent, we want to be fast, we want to be simple. That is what the 8010FX is all about. So if we go beyond the, this basic philosophy to the domain of the applications, it's very simple. You have a call site, you have a served building where fiber is not available. Uh, basically, utilize the 8010 FX in a point to point application to extend or replace the fiber. Uh, that is really the most basic uh, uh, use case for the 8010 FX. Another uh, use case is uh, quite simple uh, an extension of the first one. You might have already an existing fiber run into this served building on the right, but now there is a critical customer uh, which is coming up with a very high demanding SLA all the way up to redundant facilities coming into the building. Now, we all know that uh, com you know, bringing the first fiber was not easy. Bringing the second fiber on a diverse route will be even more challenging. And now you can simply uh, bring basically an additional facility completely independent from the first one. It can go back to the same building. It can go to another building. Uh, depending on the network architecture of your preference, uh, again, uh, our 8010FX is transparent to any of this and will basically allow you to run a high redundancy service into this served building on the right. So that's a very simple second uh, use case. Uh, we can now think about uh, this next uh, use case here where you might have a ring uh, across the city passing through a number of uh, facilities and buildings uh, going all the way back to the core it can be the same call site, it can be two different sites, depending on how you architected your network. And uh, there are a number of fiber runs already available to connect uh, these different buildings to each other. 
and obviously there, will, there is going to be an Ethernet switch, or maybe a layer three, layer three switch or router in each of these different locations. And uh, of course, uh, unfortunately, there is a missing link in this ring and AT10FX comes to the rescue. Uh, we can simply uh, replace this missing uh, fiber link uh, between these two locations here on the right of the ring with an AT10 effect, with a pair of AT10 effects or an AT10 effects link, and it will behave just as uh, there would be fiber going between these two locations, uh, and which also means now that uh, whatever the method was of uh, maintaining the ring and the redundancy and switching traffic right and left uh, on the ring, uh, avoiding any loops, uh, of course, uh, we, whatever these uh, devices in the served location and most importantly the two core switches uh, in the backbone of your network, uh, any which way we do uh, ERPS uh, G.8032 or any MPLS uh, redundancy, it does not matter, the 8010FX is going to be transparent just as a piece of fiber was going to be transparent. And the moment you bring this uh, fiber between these two sites, you can move the 8010FX to another location. Uh, the, there is no need to program anything differently in your network because we have fiber or 8010FX. And last uh, use case that we can talk about is uh, here a ring uh, where now uh, you have this uh, building. Uh, I'm going to try and highlight it here. Uh, so in this location we have a building here and where the two uh, radio links uh, meet and you only have maybe one, maybe two customers, each one with no more than a one gigabit service. So you can now utilize basically uh, the two, um, you can utilize uh, you know, one gigabit port off of each of these radios to deliver two gigabit services, two one gigabit services, sorry, to two customers in that uh, facility, in that location, which means that the cost of uh, providing services to the first two customers is basically just the price of the radio and nothing more, when the third, fourth customers, etc., would join, uh, it would be time to install uh, a more powerful device, uh, which means that uh, the return on investment is also more graceful in that case or shorter, uh, because you could uh, start offering services in that building with very little investment, just uh, one or two radio links into that uh, building, which is a lot cheaper than uh, going with fiber into these locations. And in that case, uh, the AT10 effects uh, have support for VLAN uh, management uh, and from there uh, support ring topology in an orderly fashion. So uh, now that we have uh, talked about uh, the use cases, uh, we'll talk about uh, the last one. Uh, again, why did we think about building a copper port directly into a 10 gigabit radio. Uh, there is no other radio in the industry with that kind of uh, support, uh, that kind of a 10 gigabit uh, port. It's an RJ45, so you can run basically with CAT6A or CAT5 and an RJ45 plug into the radio, uh, side by side with the fiber port as a replacement to the fiber port. And uh, basically the idea here is very simple. You might have already an existing CAT6A or CAT5E uh, from the basement all the way to the roof. Uh, you don't want to, there might not be room in any conduit going up to uh, run the fiber, it's going to take time. Or you might not have fiber skills available in that region and training the technicians is going to take a little bit of time it should be a lot simpler and that's really what uh, at Cyclo we always try to look at how can we make the deployment, uh, the operation of our links as simple as possible. 
So you have a choice of fiber with an SFP Plus cage, and you can purchase uh, SFP Plus uh, devices from Cyclo for multi-mode or single-mode fiber. Or if you do not need to go the fiber route, utilize the uh, RJ45 port, utilize the existing skills, no need to buy tools to splice fiber. Uh, it will save a lot of time and labor into the deployment of your uh, 8010FX based 10 gigabit links. So I hope uh, you have uh, understood now a lot of uh, the use cases behind the radios and let's start thinking about the specification of the radios themselves. So the radio side of the 8010FX, uh, obviously it is an e-bound radio working in the 70 and 80 gigahertz spectrum. Uh, to achieve 10 gigabit, uh, we utilize uh, a channel bandwidth of 2000 megahertz. And because we have uh, 5 gigahertz available, in each of the 70 and 80, it means that we can offer two non-overlapping channels uh, for the 8010FX. The 8010FX uh, can be configured in software to operate on the first or the second channel. There is no different SKU, and no different part numbers, no filter to replace or anything alike, okay, like some of our competition have to do. You can just buy one radio, find out which are the frequencies available in your on that particular roof depending on the frequency coordinator uh, and the result of their investigation and basically uh, you can the next day you have a decision you can deploy don't need to wait for a radio to be delivered to that site the 10 gigabit capacity is achieved uh, utilizing 128 quam modulation uh, however, in case of uh, rain or uh, basically that's the only kind of impairment uh, which uh, we have to worry about, the uh, radio will start to modulate down. Uh, nine levels are available, uh, which uh, enhances the uh, radio performance by 30 dB. So uh, take into account that for 10 gigabit and 128 quam, we have 64 dBs of system budget, uh, more with the one foot or the two feet antennas. And in case of rain, we can top the 64 by another 30 dB to maintain the link availability. Uh, obviously at that point in time, the bandwidth is uh, not 10 gigabit anymore. And we will start dropping packets if the demand would exceed the available capacity uh, below the 10 gigabit. So that's, you know, in terms of radio, are two very uh, out of the ordinary numbers here, 64 dB of system game for 10 gigabit and 30 dB of uh, resiliency to take into account rain and other types of impairments. But this radio or this uh, eh 10 fx is not just about a radio, it's also about a built-in switch, which you can see here on the right. Uh, so any, uh, basically any uh, configuration rule that you would put into the radio, uh, it's all done in hardware. So there is not going to be any impact on the latency uh, or in the wire speed processing uh, we can do 10 gigabit any packet size uh, with any of the rules that can be programmed on the switch. It's all done in hardware and it just does not matter. Uh, so you have uh, the modem and the antenna on the right, uh, the combo 10 gigabit port and another one gigabit port, which I'm going to talk in details in a moment. And then the control port, which is internal to the switch, to the radio, sorry, to do inbound and out of band management. So fundamentally, it's all about transparent bridging, wire speed performance, very little delay across uh, the radios. And in terms of external port, I'll start with the simple one first. Uh, we have uh, one gigabit uh, Ethernet on an RJ45, which can be utilized for uh, management, can be utilized for power over Ethernet to the radio but can also be utilized as we saw in the use cases for drop and insert and even for our very famous uh, overbuild and extend the MEM uh, 
service where you can back the 10 gigabit uh, e-band radio with another uh, radio of another spectrum if you want to. A little more complex to understand is uh, the 10 gigabit combo port. So it is a single port on the switch, ETH2. You can program any kind of uh, services uh, on ETH2. That's on the logical side, on the switching layer. On the physical interface, uh, I'm going to show you the ports in a moment. We really have two uh, independent plugs on the outside. One is an SFP plus cage. One is an RJ45. Uh, you can uh, run, obviously, but the bulk of the traffic will run on this 10 gigabit combo port. It is also possible to run uh, inbound management if uh, we want to, or if you uh, prefer. And uh, there are rules for the radio to decide in case the two ports are active, uh, which port should it consider to switch traffic to or from. Out of factory, RJ45 has a precedence over the optical port, and that's just to allow, to allow local maintenance if needed to. But you can program the combo port to give priority to the optical port, to the copper port, to ignore one of the two. Uh, there are a number of options which are available on the GUI and which will allow you to configure the radio in a manner which is going to match your operations and management needs. So in terms of management, the AT10FX comes with a full suite of uh, management tools. Uh, the GUI, uh, everybody who, you know, a lot of the audience here is already familiar with uh, Ciclu and our Ether Roll product line, you are all used to either using the GUI or the CLI. The GUI allows managing uh, a complete link uh, from a, a very easy to use uh, wizard driven web interface. The CLI allows managing one radio. There is also SNMP and syslog uh, reports, uh, as well as Radius and TACAX for authentication. We have also a full suite of uh, inbound and out of band management options, uh, as can be seen here on this chart. For example, if you want to do inbound management on ETH2, uh, you can identify uh, which is the VLAN carrying the traffic. Uh, there can be a number of IP addresses programmed into the radio for management. Each IP address can be identified with a specific VLAN uh, or no VLAN at all. And that allows, again, a, a different options for local management. When a, com, a technician reaches the site and they connect with a laptop, they are not going to be bothered with a VLAN on their laptop. On the other hand, if all the traffic runs back to the core of your network, the management traffic is isolated from the uh, user traffic or payloads uh, with a VLAN, as an example. So that's uh, one way to solve uh, that. And if you prefer to do out-of-band management, again, those who are familiar with, uh, for example, 5500 or 2500, uh, you can utilize uh, ETH1. Uh, most of the time, uh, the switch, uh, which we can see here at the basement of the building, uh, we'll do the tagging and untagging of the traffic before connecting to ETH1. But if you want to do tagging, uh, it can also be done in that way. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the software release for AT10FX. It's uh, appropriately named the release 10. Uh, I know it's a 10 gigabit radio. So it it should be easy to remember what uh, software to utilize. All our other Etherroll radios utilize a different branch of the software. The current one is 7.6, uh, most uh, latest software release uh, that we did for all of our other Etherroll radio. The 8010FX comes with its own uh, software release because it's a new software architecture. It's a new hardware architecture as well. And we really wanted to start with a very clean slate in terms of implementation. 
So we have a new software release for the 8010FX, which is unfortunately not compatible with any of our other radios. So we have 7.6, the latest one, as I said, for all of Cyclos Etherall radios and release 10 for the 8010FX. That's a very clean slate, which I will utilize for additional feature. However, even though we created a very new software architecture, we did not change anything in terms of the user experience. So anybody who has used our uh, dual pane GUI end-to-end -end management uh, for you know, 2500 or 5500 maybe, uh, you will see that the GUI of the 8010FX looks very much the same and there's going to be a minimum amount, a minimal sorry, amount of training to do to learn about the 8010FX. CLI commands uh, follow the same syntax, the MIB follows the same syntax. There is a new MIB of, obviously for the 8010FX uh, because it's a new software, uh, but you will see that there is a huge overlap between uh, the CLI commands or the MIB of the 8010 FX compared to what we did. And again, all of this is designed to allow a very easy transition, very quick transition uh, for our existing uh, customers. A complete package of uh, documentation, software image, MIP file, user manual, release notes, all this is available as it should on our partners portal. It's part, uh, partners.cyclo.com. If you have a user ID, you can log in, uh, click on the software download area. Uh, there you have a choice of uh, Etherall, Etherall 8010, and other radios. Uh, click the Etherall 8010, and you have all the support package available there. If you do not have access to our partners portal, you can request uh, access on this uh, first page, partners.cyclo.com and our support team uh, will provide you this access with a very short turnaround. So let's talk a little more now about uh, the mechanics of the 8010FX. It's, uh, no, I promise you that I would show you uh, the ports uh, in a moment. So you have here a bottom view of the radio. You can see that we have five uh, as opposed to six ports that we tradition, traditionally have. The ground port is on the right. Uh, then we have uh, a DC port, which is uh, here also new. Uh, a lot of people have told us uh, while we were talking about this uh, 10 gigabit radio, it's going to go into the back hall of our network. It's going to be very important. And we really need something which is more secure than the plug. We want to know that you know we can plug and we can also screw in that DC port uh, to be sure that uh, the power is going to remain uh, affixed to the radio no matter what. Uh, so we have changed from our previous plug, which was just a plug, to uh, this newer one. It's easy to recognize there are just two prongs for the plus and the minus, and then two screws on each side, so you first of all connect your wires into the DC plug which is provided with the radio, uh, plug it into the radio and then you screw in the two screws on the right and the left for additional security. Uh, moving on to uh, the left we have ETH1 which is an RJ45 1 gigabit Ethernet and it is also power over Ethernet for the radio. The radio draws uh, 50 watt of power. I think that's also one of the lower numbers on the industry for 10 gigabit. Uh, it means that almost any radio that you were running before, uh, you know, the DC cable or the PoE injector that you might have in place would deliver enough power to uh, make to support this radio. You know, we try all we can to make it very easy to transition. Then we have ETH2, which, as I told you before, is a combo of RJ45 and SFP, the RJ45 next to ETH1. So that's a 10 gigabit copper port. And then an SFP plus cage, uh, where you can plug multi-mode or, or a single mode uh, SFP plus devices, which are also available uh, on our price list. 
And all the way to the left, we have uh, an auxiliary port, uh, which has uh, a non-active today a USB interface. It will be activated with uh, software in the future. And we have our uh, very uh, common uh, socket uh, for uh, DVM to read uh, the RSSI, the receive level signal. Uh, basically right there out of a DVM. Uh, there is also a reset button inside the, the auxiliary port and there are, uh, in addition to the LEDs which are near the RJ45 plugs, uh, all the SFP connector, there, are, there is an RF LED and a power LED uh, which basically tell you the basic status of the radio, is power available and is uh, the RF synchronized or not. In terms of uh, mechanics, it is obviously a KO class uh, radio, minus 45 to 55C, just like all of our other radios. Uh, and it is also IP67, which means that you can basically dip it into water. But you know, what is more important, uh, rain or dust will not penetrate the radio uh, you know, when the antenna is properly mounted and when the all-weather uh, all weather shell uh, shells, sorry, are terminating the ports uh, properly. Uh, we provide a minimum number of shells to connect uh, power and 10 gigabit into the radio. If you think you need more, uh, we can offer additional shells with these radios. Uh, to make it very simple, we have not invented new antennas or mounting kits, so this 8010FX uh, will leverage any existing one foot antenna which you might have already on the shelf one foot mounting kit uh, will also work with uh, our two feet antennas and in the future we will release a, a half a foot antenna uh, if anybody has activities outside of the US which most everybody has here on the call but maybe also in the US the half a foot antenna is not uh, approved uh, in, uh, F by the FCC because they require a minimum gain which uh, the half a foot antennas do not allow. So if we want to see how they really look like, you have here on the right an 8010FX mounted behind a one foot antenna and with a, the appropriate mounting kit. Uh, you could think about uh, the situation on the left where you have an existing uh, 25 or maybe 5500 radio installed here on the left and basically all you need to do is uh, replace the radio to go from 1 or 2 or 5 gigabit to 10 gigabit. It's the same mounting kit, it's the same antenna, it's the same wiring as well. So really uh, migrations uh, can happen very quickly, uh, no, no need to uh, install anything new besides swapping the radio. Uh, because we have a quick, quick release plate on the one foot mounting kit, uh, it's basically uh, very easy to replace the radio and the alignment should not be affected. We are still going to recommend to check it, but most of the time you will see that if you replace uh, an existing cycle radio by uh, the 8010 FX, uh, there is either no alignment uh, to do or a very minimum amount of alignment to adjust again. And you can do that while the radio operates uh, because the RSSI reading is available either on the GUI or on the auxiliary port, uh, as you probably know already. So again, the you know, installation in general and migration in particular are going to be very easy. So with that, um, you know, I'd like to basically uh, summarize uh, what we have seen so far. We have the leading radio performance, uh, both in terms of system gain and in terms of amount of, uh, if you want, available power uh, for uh, reacting to rain events. Uh, it's the only 10 gigabit radio which can leverage any existing uh, cabling that you might, ha might have going up to the roof, uh, fiber or copper, uh, it can do it. And 
uh, if you have it, no time to go and ask your distributors, they will tell you that we definitely have very attractive street prices. And I'm going to turn over to Sharon now to see what were the questions asked. Uh, however, uh, if it's okay before we start, and you know to give you uh, maybe an idea, it's a little bit of time to think about your questions. I'm going to raise here another uh, poll to try and understand you know, after what you have seen here, uh, where do you see yourself in terms of uh, your most common or your dominant uh, link speed about a year from now? Uh, you know, basically, pick uh, the choice which uh, makes most sense for you. Uh, you know, are you going to maybe stay at one or two gigabit? Are you going to go to be mostly at 10 gigabit? See that a lot of uh, the audience has already voted. I'm going to give this another five or ten seconds uh, for the last uh, third of the audience to complete their entry. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you much, very much, everybody. I'm going to try and share the results. Um, let's see if that does it. So we see here that almost two thirds of the audience is planning to be, uh, actually over two thirds of the audience is going to be at 10 gigabit about a year from now. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the vote of confidence. Uh, no, I like uh, your uh, your plan very much uh, and yes our other radios are going to be avail available if you want to so one gigabit definitely there if that's uh, what you prefer uh, with that uh, Sharon uh, hope you know, if anybody has had any questions um, I think now would be a good time to start uh, to try and see if we can uh, answer those so please yes, go Simon. Yes, Simon. So first of all, thank you very much. Um, uh, my apologies, I forgot to introduce myself, but as Simon said, my name is Sharon, Sharon Salzberg, and I'm from the marketing department of Ciclu. And yes, we have uh, some very interesting questions. Before I start uh, uh, asking you the questions, Simon, I would like to remind you that the webinar will, will be sent to all of you here, um, the, the recording and including the questions and the answers. And oh, those uh, questions that we won't have time to answer all of them because we have uh, quite a lot, uh, we will answer them um, in, in, in the email that will be sent to you with the, with the recorded webinar. So the first question is, uh, what is the maximum distance? A very good question. So in terms of uh, distances, first of all, I, I'll remind everybody that uh, we have our link budget calculator, uh, which will allow you to uh, review the you know, capability of uh, the AT10FX, just like uh, you can review any other link from Ciclu, uh, taking into account uh, the rain densities uh, in uh, your area. It's going to be different in London or in Moscow or in St. Petersburg or uh, you know, in, in uh, Berlin, maybe, uh, wherever you are going to deploy. Uh, and different organizations have different availability uh, targets. But let me say that uh, with about uh, four and a half, uh, nine, so that's 99.95, uh, you, we can uh, go you know, be, between three and four kilometers depending on the rain densities. Uh, areas like London, maybe in the three kilometers. Uh, are other areas uh, which are drier and you know, don't have a good example here, maybe are going to be able to run uh, at 99.95% uh, availability, uh, even all the way to four kilometers. And again, that's taking the typical rain densities in different regions of the world. If you want to check, uh, you know, your region and your availability or your target availability practice, again, that it's very easy, lbc.cyclo.com, uh, that's all. 
Okay, thank you, Shimon, uh, for the first question. The next question would be, how does the EH8010 FX decide on the active 10 GBE, uh, gigabyte port on ETH2? Okay, so uh, ETH2 is the combo port. I guess that's why the question is being asked, uh, fiber or copper. If there is only one port available, uh, out of factory, so if there is only one connection to the combo, out of factory, the radio uh, is configured to utilize uh, the only port which is available. It doesn't matter if it is the copper side or the fiber side. Uh, however, if both are uh, active, uh, again, by default, uh, the software is set to uh, take the traffic from the copper port. And the reason we've done it in this way is to allow a very simple scenario where uh, you know, fiber is going up uh, not into ETH2 and uh, ETH1 is utilized for power over Ethernet. And now a technician arrives to, the, to do some local maintenance. They cannot disconnect the fiber uh, because they don't have a fiber port on their laptop. Uh, they cannot connect to ETH1 because that would take down the power from the radio. So they connect to the copper port of ETH2 and automatically they basically can uh, send commands to the radio. And when they terminate their maintenance activity, they just disconnect. The radio will automatically revert back to taking the traffic from the optical port. So that's a very simple use case. Uh, for the combo port and uh, local maintenance. Uh, however, as I said, any of this uh, behavior can be tweaked in the way the organization will want to, uh, you know, in the GUI and in the CLI. So you can just go there to the port settings and configure the behavior of the combo port in a way that uh, you know, matches your operations practices. Okay, so the next question is also quite related to the previous one. Do I need to purchase any accessory for the 10 GB over copper? Oh, that's a that's even a better one. So, um, so, no, so the, the the answer is no. You, there is no need on the radio side to purchase anything to get 10 gigabit over copper because the RJ45 is built into the radio. And yes, we are aware that there are a number of SFP devices which can run 10 gigabit uh, on uh, an RJ45 connector, uh, you know, with uh, 802.3an, 10 gigabit base T. Uh, that's a very common solution today. Uh, however, when we were designing the radios and people were telling us about you know, their expectations to be able to migrate very easily from uh, one or two uh, to ten, uh, we we searched for all these devices because we were going to have uh, the SFP cage anyway, and we could not find any SFP device for 10 gigabit which would uh, operate in the extended temperature range, so minus 40 to plus 55. Uh, all of these devices are basically designed for the data center and to allow basically uh, you know, 10 gigabit runs uh, over copper um, you know, between switches inside the data center. Uh, that does not help a radio which has to operate in hot and cold weather. Uh, we, you know, where, wherever you are going to deploy those. Uh, so we decided to go the extra mile uh, or here the, the extra 100 meter um, basically and build the uh, 10 gigabit copper termination directly into the radio. And on your switch, uh, you know, in the basement, if you have uh, also an 802.3 AN 10 gigabit the base T port built into the switch with an RJ45, they will connect. It's a standout, uh, it's going to work. If you have only an SFP cage and you want to utilize your existing uh, CAT6 uh, cable going up to the roof, then you can buy one of these SFP devices with an RJ45 at 10 gigabit, plug it into your uh, switch in the basement it's temperature controlled environment anyways and the SFP will operate but it would not have worked for many cases uh, to plug such a device into the radio 
because we do not function in extent temperature range. Thank you very much, Shimon. The next question is about latency. What is the latency? Would this product fit the high-speed trading market? Um, interesting question. Uh, you know, high-speed trading market is something that we are not very active at Cyclus. It's so difficult for me to say right out of the bat if it will work, but I can tell you what this radio can do. Uh, because it's all uh, hardware uh, switching, uh, the latency is typically going to be uh, better than 10 microseconds at any packet size, you know, short or long. Uh, again, better than 10 microseconds typically, uh, even at full load. Uh, you know, that's what you should be expecting. Uh, I'm not sure if it is uh, good enough for uh, high frequency trading, but certainly uh, very efficient for most of the networks. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next one, can you explain the backup power option, please? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, so, yes, so I, I did mention when I was uh, looking at uh, the ports that uh, we have uh, option to connect power uh, via direct DC on the power port or via PoE uh, into ETH1. And in case uh, one wants a redundant power supply to the radio, it is possible to connect uh, power DC to the DC port and PoE to ETH1. Even if you don't use that port for management, the radio will select one of the two, the one with the highest uh, difference in potential uh, to operate first. And if that first source of DC power would vanish, it will switch over automatically to the other one and will revert uh, when the other when the first one would resume. So uh, this way we provide uh, redundant power into uh, the radio. Thank you very much. Uh, we understand that uh, this is a new software. Uh, the next question is about uh, the GUI of the software. Is it also new? Um, so the so, well, the, the implementation of the GUI itself, because it's a new software, is all new. Uh, again, it's a new software, new release. However, the look and feel of the GUI, or you know, the way we can operate today on our radios, basically the local and the remote one, uh, over a single screen, and then basically uh, do parallel configuration, confirm end-to-end -end performance, or a similar type of... Uh, uh, operation and maintenance activity on one screen for the two radios. Uh, all that is done uh, exactly in the same way on the NT10 FX. And you can just connect to one radio, uh, connect uh, to its IP address with a browser, and it will automatically start showing the end to end uh, radios. And you have the same wizard when you connect first, uh, uh, the same, uh, uh, you know menu level, the same uh, distribution of activities between radio and switching and ports and uh, uh, software and file management. Uh, in the same way it is done today on our other radios, it is done uh, you know, on the ATT and FX as well. So no, okay. no, no learning curve, uh, hopefully, uh, to do this. All right. Uh, thank you very much. We have. Uh, do we have some more time for uh, uh, two more questions? I, th I think we do. Yes, we. We've, uh, on my clock here, we have at least another five minutes, so we can probably run one or two more questions. Okay. So uh, the next question is: uh, Where can we find more information about the EG eighty ten FX? Very simple. So first of all, on our website, uh, you, know, you can go on our website, uh, look at our product selector, for example, and uh, select 10 gigabit capacity, or uh, just go for uh, the kilo uh, family of products. Uh, the ATT and FX is listed there, and you will get uh, the data sheet. Uh, if uh, you are a registered partner, you can go into our partners portal have access uh, to more information, such as, again, the data sheet, the user manual, the installation manual, a product description, uh, which uh, basically provides uh, 
any and all of the information related to uh, performance, uh, supported features, uh, you know, dimensions, weight, uh, you know, standards uh, which are adhered to, uh, etc. Okay. Um... Let's see, we have uh, some time for an, an additional question. Uh, does the EH8010FX have switching capabilities like the EH2500FX or it's more of a bridge only radio like the EH5500FD? Um, well, I would say it's a, it's a combination of the two. Uh, you know, again, remember our use case. You know, the the first goal is to replace uh, 10 gigabit, fi you know, 10 gigabit fiber run between two uh, switches or outers or uh, whatever it was going to be. Uh, so, first of all, you know, as a 10 gigabit uh, wire replacement, that is what it is. It will uh, replace uh, 10 gigabit run of fiber. Uh, and from that point of view, it is better than the 5500, which could only do 5 gigabit. Uh, it is better than the 5500 in as much as you can also program in-band management. So if you, in, with the 5500, uh, you could only do out-of-band. With the 2500, you could do out and in-band. With the uh, 8010 FX, you can do in-band and out-of-band management, you can program it to do whatever you want. So from that point of view, there, is, uh, uh, there are some switching capabilities. Uh, the one gigabit port is not there only for management. As I showed earlier, you can do a drop and insert uh, you know, of a service of that one gigabit port. Uh, we will activate uh, the extend BAM overbuild feature in the future that is realized because we have a switch built into the radio to do this so it is uh, you know, an intelligent bridge if you want uh, it will uh, probably never be as sophisticated as the 2500 in terms of uh, switching rules and in the 2500 we had to we had to do that because we have we had to build more than one port to handle the complete capacity. So the reason we really had to uh, to build more smart in the 2500 is more out of uh, need uh, as out of opportunity. Uh, we believe that with the 8010FX, uh, with its goal being to uh, replace fiber and allow any management uh, and maybe some additional features, uh, you know, we have a switch, we, we will add features as we go, uh, we are you know, waiting to hear from uh, the audience here uh, today you know, and in the coming month what is going to be important and uh, we'll prioritize implementation of additional switching features uh, you know, along the coming year. Okay, thank you very much, Shimon. Uh, our time is up. Thank you very much for all those who attended this very informative and interesting webinar. Again, uh, the the recording will be sent out, uh, and all the unanswered questions will be answered. Um, so no worries. Thank you again, and see you next time on our upcoming webinars. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, Sharon, for helping me with this webinar.